Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including updates on a longer range Model S, Giga Berlin's official opening, Model 3 price increases, and a huge price increase from Rivian. So let's get into it, and a special thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. First up today, both of Tesla's new factories are on the verge of opening. At Giga Berlin, where Tesla has faced lots of delays, Tesla has reportedly begun long-range Model Y testing this week. We've seen them building hundreds of performance Model Ys at Giga Berlin, but none have been long-range, which is the most popular option sold. According to sources, they are doing four test models, one with the 20-inch wheels and three with the Gemini wheels. It's unclear when Giga Berlin will start production of the long-range variant for good, but performance models should be delivering very shortly. With that comes the news that Tesla's final approval has officially been received at Giga Berlin. After a lot of delays and missed deadlines, Tesla's new Gigafactory Berlin has won final approval from Germany. An official document was published by the state of Brandenburg, outlining the steps Tesla needs to take in order to start official production there. In the press release, it says, quote, the project, which was approved with the 536-page decision, includes the plant for the production of up to 500,000 vehicles per year, aluminum smelting plants, and an aluminum foundry, plants for surface treatment, heat generation, and storage. The facility also includes battery cell production, an operational wastewater treatment plant, a fire brigade equipment house, a high bay warehouse, as well as laboratories and workshops. There are a few steps for Tesla to complete in order to begin production, but once they do, they are good to go. To give you an idea of how much paperwork was submitted for approval, Sawyer Merritt posted a photo of all the paperwork Tesla had to submit to local officials to get approved. In the middle there is the 500 36 page approval document Tesla just received, approving production of 500,000 vehicles annually. Regarding the operations at Giga Berlin, a thread posted by Sawyer Merritt, which actually comes through at Troy Teslike, gave us a lot of info as to Tesla's current plans there. It also includes info on when they plan to shift to 4680 battery cells, like they're planning to start with in Texas. First, Tesla aims for a run rate of 1,000 Model Ys per week by the end of April in Berlin. They are expecting to shut down production for three weeks in Q3 or Q4 of this year in order to shift the assembly line from 2170 to 4680 battery cells. Tesla won't have approval delays at that factory anymore, but I still wouldn't be surprised if that change doesn't actually go through until 2023. But next, they said that for now, Giga Shanghai is supplying the 2170 packs complete and that they can provide 5,000 packs per week without issue. Additionally, Giga Berlin will make its own 4680 cells for the changeover in the next few months. Reportedly regarding general 4680 cell production at Tesla's Cato Road facility, in California, they did make their one millionth cell in January, as they posted, and are targeting a goal of another million by the end of this month. Ultimately, they want that plant to produce 10 gigawatt hours of cells. Over at Giga Texas, Tesla has installed the machinery to start their 4680 cell lines and expects to start production of them there next month. The changeover to 4680 cells at these factories is a big deal, and since these are such new production lines, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some delays, but Tesla is on the path to making their own battery cells and packs in the same factories where they build Model Ys. That's a big deal and a huge step in the plans that they laid out at Battery Day. Next up today, let's talk about Tesla's ultimate goal of making electric vehicles cheaper. Tesla's original master plan included the creation of the Roadster in order to fund the Model S, in order to fund the Model 3. That Model 3 was supposed to be their affordable vehicle, and that, along with the Model Y, has allowed them to expand significantly. They have expanded to the point where they are having to build two new factories this year, one of which we just talked about, with the same cars they ship. Ultimately, though, they want electric vehicles to be attainable for people in all price ranges. But this past year, we've only seen them increase prices. Back when I bought my standard range plus Model 3, the base price was $37,990. Now the base price of the standard range Model 3, Tesla's cheapest car, is $44,990. Similarly, with the Model Y a year ago, that car sold for a full $10,000 cheaper than it does today. Ultimately, this has made many think that Tesla is just going to keep raising prices and never actually get affordable. However, there are many factors at play here, including the rising cost of raw materials and inflation as a whole. Just this past week, we got a huge update from Rivian that falls into this category. Rivian has taken $1,000 pre-orders for their R1T truck and R1S SUV for the past couple of years. Pricing was actually pretty reasonable, all things considered, because this truck promised a lot. Their base model was quad motor with a powered truck bed and a 314 mile EPA range. Then this week, Rivian announced a new configuration, a dual motor standard range R1 
R1T and R1S without a powered truck bed cover. This is exciting because it should offer a lower entry price for these cars, but the opposite was true in multiple ways. For one, the originally announced pricing for these cars became the pricing of this standard range dual motor truck with less interior features. Quad motor is a $6,000 upgrade, the large pack is a $6,000 upgrade, and they now charge $1,800 for a manual truck bed cover and $3,000 for a powered one. Various other upgrades increased in price as well. Now price increases like this were inevitable, but when Rivian announced this, they announced it for all deliveries going forward, regardless of if you pre-ordered or not. That meant that if you pre-ordered in 2018 and gave them $1,000, you suddenly have to pay an extra $14,000 to $20,000 or more to get the same truck that you were promised. Or you could opt to get a lower spec one when production begins for those in 2024. In their email about this to reservation holders, they said, quote, these price increases, the result of inflationary pressure on the cost of supplier components and raw materials across the world, will allow us to maintain product excellence as we continue investing in electrification for our shared future. We remain committed to offering compelling products and helping drive competition, inspiring as many drivers as possible to switch to electric vehicles. The next email from Rivian was that official update, increasing everyone's order pricing, and this led to a huge influx of cancellations. Some polls showed that over half of all future Rivian customers were canceling their orders because of this. It's clear why people were canceling. Regardless of the reasoning for price increases or what Rivian intended, they took $1,000 pre-orders for these cars, and customers felt that they were supporting the brand early on and locking in that price. Then Rivian delivered the first couple thousand R1Ts to their employees only, snatched up a large number of solid reviews online, and then when they're about ready to scale up and deliver to their loyal customers, they jack up prices 15 to 20 grand. Customers felt bait and switched, and ultimately this caused Rivian to walk back this decision. An email from Rivian's CEO, RJ, was sent out just two days later. He started the email saying, quote, earlier this week we announced pricing increases that broke the trust we have worked to build with you. Regarding pre-existing orders, he said, quote, as we worked to update pricing to reflect these cost increases, we wrongly decided to make these changes apply to all future deliveries, including pre-existing configured pre-orders. Then they allowed people to reinstate their orders at original pricing if they would like, saying, quote, for anyone with a Rivian pre-order as of the March 1st pricing announcement, your original configured price will be honored. If you canceled your pre-order on or after March 1st and would like to reinstate it, we will restore your original configuration, pricing, and delivery timing. Our team will be sending an email in the next few days with more details. So that reversal by Rivian on existing orders is great to see, but for many, they have lost trust in Rivian anyway. If they tried to pull a thing like this and only reversed it after huge backlash, what might they try to pull in the future? Leave a comment below to let me know how this has affected your view of Rivian. In any case, this leads to a broader discussion about EV price increases from all brands and why you should order now if you are looking to get a Tesla. We'll get there in just a minute. Before we go any further, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN is the fastest VPN out there with over 5,300 servers in 60 countries and support for up to six devices per account. It's also available on every platform, including Windows, Android, iOS, macOS, and Linux. It's easy to use and allows you to connect with one click or enable auto connect for zero click protection. So what is a VPN? A VPN is a virtual private network that encrypts your internet traffic and hides your IP address and virtual location. This boosts your online privacy, preventing third parties from spying on your online activity, and can particularly keep you safe when connected to public Wi-Fi. It's a necessity for online security, but also allows you to unblock content that is blocked in your country. For example, if you are traveling abroad and want to access the content you watch at home, you can change your location with NordVPN and access it. This also works when you're at home trying to access content only available abroad. Simply change your location with one click and you're good to go. To check out NordVPN for yourself, visit nordvpn.com slash ryanshaw, linked below, and use the coupon code ryanshaw for 72% off of a two-year plan. Ultimately, what many people like about new brands like Rivian, Lucid, and especially Tesla is that when you order, the price you order is locked in. Other brands still use dealers, resulting in random price increases, like John Rettinger experienced trying to get a Mercedes EQS. He was ready for delivery, and they told him there was a $50,000 markup. He got a Lucid Air instead. We're seeing this behavior more and more at dealers for various brands, and it ends up driving people to a brand like Tesla, who at the very least will honor the pricing when you order. Sometimes in the past, they have taken 
pre-orders for a configuration and not made that configuration, but if you order a car in production, they honor your pricing. Rivian is now doing the same. This leads to two things. First, if you ordered a Cybertruck, it's safe to say you should expect the same as what we're seeing with Rivian. That car isn't in production or ready for delivery like the R1T is. The pre-order was only $100, but Tesla might pull a similar thing here. All of their cars have gone up in price. The Cybertruck has gotten better, and they've removed any mention of pricing on their website for the Cybertruck. I think the main difference here, though, is that Tesla will announce updated pricing before production and deliveries begin. Once they announce official pricing as production happens, then you will be able to lock in a price. Elon Musk recently commented on Cybertruck affordability, saying, quote, our primary challenge is affordability. Creating an expensive truck is relatively easy. If it is extremely hard to do so for Tesla, despite our much greater economies of scale and better technology, then it is near impossible for others. Here he's mentioning the challenge and alluding to the fact that a $49,900 starting price might not be possible anymore. The second thing that this Rivian debacle leads to is that regardless of how they treated pre-order price increases, Rivian price increases are still in place going forward, meaning that there is now another expensive electric vehicle on the market. We talked about the price increases we've seen from Tesla, and now Rivian is clearly facing the same issues Tesla has been. But most recently over in Australia, Tesla raised the Model 3 rear-wheel drive by $1,000. This was reported on March 2nd and is just the latest price increase from Tesla. It has been a few months since they raised prices in the US but more increases could be expected. Right now, we're seeing gas prices that were already high going up further and further. One great way to save money on gas immediately is to buy an electric vehicle, and tons of people are recognizing this along with the benefits of EVs every single day. There are some great options out there, like the Ford Mustang Mach-E and newly released Kia EV6 or Hyundai Ioniq 5, but getting those cars isn't as simple as it should be. According to Kia, talking about the EV6 in Australia, they said that if they had the supply, they could sell 10 times more EV6s in Australia. Quote, I think that if we could get 5,000 a year, we could sell 5,000. Ford's CEO, when talking about the F-150 Lightning, said, quote, for example, the F-150 Lightning, if we had full production today to meet our current demand, we would rival the Model Y as the leading BEV nameplate in the US market. This is all interesting to hear, but the reality going forward for electric vehicles is going to be that regardless of price, customers are going to buy the electric cars that are available. When you order a Model Y right now, you'll be waiting a number of months. However, you will receive your vehicle. This isn't to say it's impossible to get other electric vehicles, but battery supply is the biggest factor here. As we talked about earlier in this video, Tesla will be producing the Model Y with their own 4680 battery cells produced at two new factories this year. This will not only make the Model Y much more widely available, but will allow Tesla to detach themselves, to a degree, from battery supply constraints that all EV companies are facing. Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GM, and even Rivian will be fighting for battery supply from the same companies for the next few years, as their plans for battery production are still a ways off. This could mean that even though a Kia EV6 has a starting price of $33,400 after a federal tax credit, and Tesla's Model Y has a starting price of $58,990 without the possibility of a tax credit, Tesla could increase prices even more. Their cars are available and customers are willing to pay. Obviously, this is a lot of speculation, but all of this boils down to the fact that if you're in the market for a Tesla and deciding when to buy, it might just be a good idea to put that order in. This is something I've talked about for a while now and consistently mentioned as the Model Y slowly went up from $48,990 all the way up to $58,990. Tesla's pricing should go down eventually, but that will likely come after 4680 Model Ys are producing at scale and their own battery supply is plentiful. Ordering from Tesla does lock in your pricing though, unlike what Rivian tried to do. Next up today, one of the biggest concerns people have with EVs is range. The longer range, the better in most people's minds, which is a big part of what made the Lucid Air's 520 mile range extremely impressive. When talking about long ranges like this, Elon Musk said, quote, we could have made a 600 mile Model S 12 months ago, but that would have made the product worse in my opinion, as 99.9% .9 of time, you'd be carrying unneeded battery mass, which makes acceleration, handling, and efficiency worse. Even our 400 plus mile range car is more than almost anyone will use. This is an interesting take, especially since Tesla briefly announced 
announced and canceled the Plaid Plus Model S, which would have gotten better specs than a Plaid with a 520 mile range. Getting more range means more batteries, and Elon is right that it's more than almost anyone uses. However, the real world range of a Tesla differs greatly from what Tesla quotes. Their 400 plus mile range car doesn't actually achieve 400 plus miles if you drive normally. There's definitely a balance here, and Tesla's supercharger network makes a shorter range vehicle something that is not an issue. This also points to Tesla's biggest focus, scalability. They'd rather ship many more affordable, shorter range EVs than ship a few longer range, expensive ones. We'll see what this ends up meaning for the 500 plus mile range Cybertruck. Many people were attracted to that because if you're towing, you could see something more around 250 to 300 miles of range on the Cybertruck. Next up today, Tesla has officially made a big change to the Model S that I think is essential. Elon Musk said, quote, all cars made since November also have push center for horn, just waiting on firmware update. If you mash right side of yoke with your palm, horn will trigger. This means that once the firmware comes, which is shockingly about four months late, a normal horn will be available on the Model S yoke. I purchased mine in September, so mine will always have the horn button, touch button, which is frustrating, but I'm glad to see this change going forward. I'm really curious as to why Tesla did make this move to a touch sensitive horn button for about six months of production and then changed it, but we may never know. Next up today, a couple updates about EV competitors. Ford has officially decided to split off their EV business. They are calling it the Ford Plus plan with the Ford Model E division and Ford Blue division. The Model E is what Elon Musk originally wanted to call the Model 3, but Tesla had to change the name since Ford owned the rights. They are now using that name saying, quote, delight customers with truly incredible electric and connected vehicles and services and build the future as Ford's center of innovation and growth. For the Blue division, they said, quote, inspire customers to to pursue their dreams and passions in life with iconic Ford vehicles and experiences and serve as the engine that supports and powers Ford's future. It was just announced that Sony and Honda plan to make electric vehicles together. Sony has showed their EV concepts for a bit now with the Vision S and Vision S2. This new company that Sony and Honda are forming has yet to be finalized, but they expect to form this year and sell their first EV in 2025. It's very interesting to see companies breaking off the EV parts of their business like this, but part of it could come in the interest of direct sales. Last up today, Tesla's April 7th Giga Texas Fest is officially under review by the Travis County Fire Marshal's Office. It's not expected to face much opposition, so that approval could come through shortly and that event should happen. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you are a Model Y or Model 3 owner or future owner, you can check out the best accessories for those cars linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.